Well, hey there, everybody. This is uh, Justin Dyke from CartoonSmart.com, and it is now day four as I progress through uh, learning at Swift. As you guys know by now, I know a lot about game programming, taught books, taught hundreds of hours of videos now, but uh, I don't know that much about Swift yet, so I um, figured I'd teach it as I learn it. So uh, this is just a free lesson we'll throw it out there, and uh, even if I make a mistake, it'll probably just be funny in a year from now. So anyway, uh, this is the little kind of mini project that we're going to set up today uh, where we uh, kind of build a bit off what we did before on uh, day three. Uh, where we've got uh, this little guy that as we tap down on the screen, he goes through a, a various states of uh, idle, hurt, uh, and firing. Of course, he's not actually really doing those things. We're just kind of pretending he is and showing one simple image for each one of those. And uh, and uh, now he's got a physics, well, by the end of this lesson, he'll have a physics body and essentially something to kind of walk across here. Now, he's not changing direction or anything like that. We're not getting that fancy with it yet, but uh, you're at least uh, going to see some physics uh, in action here. And uh, uh, What's the last thing to note? Oh, that you're actually seeing the physics bodies. Okay, so that's what that circular body is around this guy, and that's what the green lines are around our little platforms here. And uh, what I'm going to do is kind of get this um, game scene class uh, back to a point where I can start from scratch uh, te teaching you guys. So uh, one of the first uh, lines I'll just go ahead and leave on here is that our view can set a, a dot phys uh, shows physics property to true and that's why you're seeing those bounding boxes or, or circular areas around objects that actually have physics applied to them. And uh, then, uh, you know, continuing on from day three, I, uh, I stripped out our other uh, dude that was getting placed on here. So again, we're just using our same uh, bro note as, as before, and I changed the artwork out just to keep things a little bit fresh. Uh, and of course, at any time, you can guys can probably go and find new game art to use over here at uh, GameArtPartners.com. There's plenty of stuff for free and plenty of stuff that is not so free. And uh, all right, now, what we'll do, sorry, I'm just kind of making things a little prettier over here. What we're going to do is set up a, a dictionary, and we are going to pass uh, those values into a uh, new class, okay? And that's going to end up being our object uh, class over here. Uh, but let's go ahead and just work exclusively in the game scene for right now. There's actually not that much stuff that we need to do, and uh, the bulk of it is going to be done right here. All right, so right up at the top. Uh, we are going to write uh, var ground data, okay? And this is going to be a dictionary type. And I believe, if I remember correctly, I was getting away with leaving this part out of it. But ultimately, I decided it was better in the end to uh, go ahead and kind of explicitly uh, tell the compiler that uh, that the my dictionary is going to be comprised of a uh, a key and a value, and both of them are going to be um, noted as strings here. Okay, so just you guys all know strings by now. That's just text, right? Just text and quotes like that. Okay, uh, I could get away with uh, doing something like putting in here any object and storing any object in here, but again, just for right now, I think it's better to only work with strings. And uh, I'll show you how this is set up. So our first value is going to be image, or I should say our first key is going to be image name, okay? And then we just separate the, the key from the value. You can just think of it like variables and values uh, with a colon there. And uh, then I'm going to note in the uh, image asset name. That's just going to be platform, and I've already got that imported in over here. Just a little platform. And of course, you can actually dig this out of the, uh, the source project that I upload. And uh, then for multiple keys, we're going to separate, or I should say for multiple kind of entries in here, we're going to separate those with a comma. Okay, so we've got our key, that's in quotes, separated by the colon from the other value over here, which is also in quotes. Now uh, we could just continue writing on the same line right here. It looks a little bit prettier uh, when you've got uh, multiple keys and values. If you kind of just do one per line and it also makes it a little bit easier to just cut and paste a few of these. And well, that's just me being obsessively nerdy lining those up perfectly all right so uh, the next thing we'll define is a, uh, a body type and uh, that we will set as square now of course these are all just 
key names and values that I'm coming up with in my head. It could be anything you want. Okay, uh, I'm going to put in here one called location, and uh, then I will put in a location. And this is kind of an oddball one. We can actually um, kind of put two values in here, which uh, the compiler is going to uh, look at later on and go, oh, I know what you're talking about. You, you want me to say, give you a uh, CG point or a location, an X and Y value uh, from these two numbers that are inside of that opening bracket and that closing bracket. So that's sort of a fun one. Good one to note for later. You know, you're kind of constantly positioning things, aren't you, in games? And then our last one, uh, we're going to put in here a place multiples on X. And I'm going to set this to a value of 10, which I come to think of it, I might not even need 10. But uh, what we'll do is we'll essentially create one platform, and then, um, or I should say, what we'll do is if this value exists, we will not only place one platform, we'll place 10 of them. Okay, and we'll do that inside of a for loop, but um, we'll write our code in such a way that uh, if we left that out, then it's just going to place uh, one platform for us there. And that is our uh, dictionary. Of course, you'll get to see you know, later on how this is actually used, where we uh, get a value based on a particular key. Um, and then one thing to note as well is that um, I'm sure many of you have used a property list uh, to feed in data, and it's essentially the same thing. It's, uh, it's like this. Okay, you have a column of your keys, and then you have your values for them. And it's, of course, it's not too hard to discover here the new file and uh, let's grab an example property list I'll call this test create it and so here we go here's a new item and uh, this is our key okay so whatever the name is uh, it might be image name and you set the type string which we did with our dictionary data earlier uh, and then some value okay so this is a lot prettier and of course uh, one day we'll do this uh, we'll import in a property list into our um, into our file, but uh, it's also good to see you know just how things look as a dictionary variable. All right, so moving on, uh, let's come down here and uh, it's about time actually we uh, we add in a new class. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pretend that you guys um, never even saw that uh, object.swift <laughs> class, and I'm going to move it to the trash, and uh, then I will create a new one. New file, go over here to source, Swift file, hit next, and we'll call this uh, object. Okay, and if it somehow got placed up there, we'll just drag it right back into here. All right, uh, so uh, let's go ahead and um, uh, work with this guy. We are going to write uh, up here at the top import. And I think actually some of this we should just copy in. Let's do that. Just to get us off to a good start. A quicker start, I should say. All right, so this is going to be a class. And of course, uh, object is going to be the class name. We don't want to put something different than what we wrote over here. And then uh, this is going to be a subclass of uh, SK node, which is kind of your basic building block. In, uh, in Sprite Kit, everything is going to descend from, or everything that gets added to the um, scene, I should say, is uh, is going to be a descendant or a subclass of SK Node. So this is kind of our base building block. And uh, in some of the previous days, I showed you guys uh, custom classes that were subclasses of uh, uh, SK Sprite Node. And uh, what we're going to do with this is um, kind of just use it as a container to hold a sprite node, uh, but it could also include uh, multiple sprite nodes. It could include other type classes inside of there. So uh, I'm trying to think of a, a great analogy. Uh, think of it as a box that can, can contain many things, okay? And if we move the box around to a different location, say, it would then, of course, move everything inside of the box. Now, the things in the box might not shift around or move, but the overall location of the box got taken someplace else okay uh, so uh, let's go through here and um, again I'm gonna copy in this funky thing that uh, <clears throat> shows up as required anyway if I try to leave it off so uh, 
And then we're going to put init. And uh, you know, previously when we were work, working with the SKH sprite node class, I'll just show it to you real quick. We had uh, edit and then image named and string. So it was asking us to put in there a uh, a parameter that was a string. So give it some string data. It'll use that uh, to uh, find an image to show you. Now what we're going to do is we're going to be uh, passing in our dictionary. So uh, I'm going to put in here the dict for short for dictionary, and uh, then I'm going to specify that uh, the type is going to be dictionary or the class is going to be dictionary that we're going to pass in, and uh, it also wants to know what type of data is uh, in that dictionary there. Okay, and of course this matches what we set up over here, string and string when we created the dictionary. Makes sense. So. Uh, I'm sure that there's a, a way around that, uh, but uh, that worked for me. And then we're going to call super.init, and then uh, once, uh, once we're inside of here and we don't see any uh, red exclamation points or anything, it's time to basically kind of like look through the data that we got. And um, one of the things we can do early on is to say let image equal uh, the dict and image name and that is going to be the one of the keys in our dictionary all right so if we go back over here all right look at that that matches this right here okay so essentially we're creating a variable that's going to be equal now to that keys value in the dictionary which is going to be platform all right so this will be the image name to show or one or many images, or I should say sprites in here, or many textures of sprites. All right, and then uh, after that, uh, let's go ahead and, um, and of course we're not actually using that yet, but uh, we're, we're getting it set up to be used later. And then uh, let's create a CG point uh, variable that is gonna be equal to the location over here all right so there's our location key so we want the value from that and uh, we're gonna put uh, CG point from string that really hasn't changed from objective C and uh, that's gonna convert this little part right here that opening and closing bracket with the two numbers comma separated uh, to an actual CG point okay and uh, all we have to do in here is just put uh, again the dictionary and uh, location okay so that's our key see how that works and uh, if we want to give this a uh, well actually no we can't test it because <laughs> there's no visual representation but uh, I was gonna say we could test it and, and see that we've moved the location of it but again there's nothing there to actually see yet but uh, by writing self.position equals location, it has moved this SK node. Now you have to also assume in this scenario that we've added it to the state, the scene, but uh, that would do it, okay? And kind of a big thing to note here is that we're writing self.position, which is moving the entire thing, okay? But keep in mind, in a little bit, we're gonna put in here some SK sprite nodes that are gonna be just inside of the box, okay, our SK node, and we can set their position differently. And uh, in that analogy, of the box actually kind of works. <laughs> I think about it. Came up with that uh, on the fly there, because you can position things inside of a box, you know, independently of the box itself. All right, so uh, now we're going to write if, and this is going to be a big thing to test right here, okay? And maybe, uh, should I write it in pseudocode first? No, I'll just go ahead and write it. Uh, we're going to put it in here, if uh, the dict place multiples, hopefully I can spell it multiples right, on x, if that does not equal nil, uh, I will write a little pseudocode here. Then we are going to place more than one uh, image or sprite, I should say. All right, all right. 
else we only need to place one okay so from here on I think actually most of our work is going to be just handling these two scenarios right here which are actually very similar to each other okay because in both cases we're going to be creating at least one um, SK sprite node and adding it inside of this node uh, but the difference being if we have many of them we're going to enclose all that creation and you know, adding to the adding to the node code inside of a for loop, which is going to loop through or iterate through the number of times that we've specified for our place multiples on X.